Hail, hail, the Celts are here, and what the hell do we care now, Josh? We are about to kick off a League Cup campaign at the weekend, away to Kilmarnock. We've had two league games in the bag, six points on the league table, and we're already getting in more transfer business done. It has been announced, it has been confirmed that Lager Bielke uh, has been confirmed as the latest Celtic signing. Unexpected, I don't think so, but um, it's good to see it was done quite quickly, wasn't it? Yeah, I think this one did come on quite quickly. It was, I think, just last week, end of last week, maybe we first heard about it. Um, potentially might have been moved on due to the injury to Cameron Carter Vickers at the weekend. Uh, we don't know the extent of that um, as yet. But yeah, I think it's a good signing. Um, definitely one of the top talents in Swedish football. Um, big defender, very quick and good on the ball. So has all the attributes to potentially succeed. Got him for quite a cheap fee, 2.9 million, uh, 2.9 million, sorry. And um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll only go on to do well for us. I think eventually Cameron Carter Vickers is going to be your first choice centre back, and then he'll potentially look to compete with Mike Navrowski. But um, no, a good sign in my opinion. Yeah, it definitely looks apart on all this, on the all the data and everything else that goes around it. We had Anel on uh, on the channel last week, just giving us the kind of you know the scoop on you know what they think about him back there, and he's leaving a title race, you know, in Elfsborg, also yeah. one of the, you know. One of the bigger teams there, certainly, but it's not they're not a team that regularly competes for titles. So mm-hmm. he's you know, they're having a pretty good season. And in the past, when we've brought some of these players in before, obviously the most recent past, it's mainly been guys from Japan or whatever. But when guys have come into Celtic over the last, you know, you know, the last 10, 15 years and they've already started playing already, you know, we've mm-hmm. had a good track record of some of these guys hitting the ground running and coming in, especially when opportunity presents itself, like potentially this relapse or whatever has been mm-hmm. on with big with like CCV. So yeah, I think it's well good timing and it's um, it kind of doubles down on this sentiment that's came out of the team that are out of the club that it's a one-in, one-out approach. You know, Starfield's mm. out, you know, that kind of happened over a 72-hour period or so really. I know maybe it took a little bit longer before everything was confirmed and, and whatnot, but you kind of got the sniff of that and then it became reality quite quickly, similar to this lager BLK. So uh, it does feel like, you know, there's definitely some more transfer business to be done in mm. this window. And I think lager BLK probably comes in more as a squad player, pr- Predominantly, you know, Navrochi, I think we thought was going to be doing the same. And I make you quite right. I think now that with uh, Starfield out of the building, it's probably going to be a straight fight out between those two yeah. on maybe a week to week basis or until one of them really, you know, steps above the other in, in mm-hmm. some way, whether yeah. it be in Europe or in a big match. Because we've got quite a lot of big matches coming up um, yeah. in quick succession. But, you know, with this whole one in, one out approach, the manager's quotes, I forget exactly what they were in the last week, Josh, but. He did kind of uh, give some sort of tells that Stephen Welsh has been given a mm-hmm. role in the squad and it's really up to him whether he wants to accept that role. With Carter Vickers maybe being out, maybe it looks a bit more appealing immediately um, than mm-hmm. maybe when it was presented to him. But that definitely does, you feel, open the door to a lot of these rumours we've seen and heard. Uh, like Anthony Joseph, when he was on the flagship podcast a few weeks ago, was telling us Aberdeen are still in the mix for, for Liam Scales. They're just waiting for, mm-hmm. the, for Celtic to return a phone call or something. And uh, Yuki Kobayashi, there's a lot of noises going around that he might be leaving us on loan. So if we lost both of those guys, or if we, I say lost, but if we let them leave, do we go and get another centre-back, do you think, at that stage? Or Because Bosa Lawal is now out of the building, so there's not even any academy yeah. guys you could you could say. I think it's, I don't think you, would, I don't think it should be high up on the agenda. Um, at least you've got three first-team ready centre-backs, Carter Vickers, Laga Bielka, and now obviously Navroski as well. And then Stephen Welsh, like we've said, Brendan certainly wants him around. Uh, I think as well for the homegrown quota in Europe, he'll be He'll be someone that will be helpful for us. I don't think we'd need to sign a new centre back. I don't think we will. Um, I think we've got three of them who will compete certainly. And then Welsh is your squad player. I don't think he done too bad when he came off the bench against Aberdeen as well at the weekend. Uh, didn't look too out of place. And I think you said that last week. Maybe Welsh is someone who'll be a backup option now. And then when he gets to his prime, twenty six, twenty seven, he could be someone who potentially goes on to compete for a regular spot in the team. So. He's a good player to have around. He knows the club as well, and it's great to have players like that, obviously, to help the new boys settle into the city, settle into the club, tell them what it's all about. So I think Stephen Mills is a good character to have around. and Not in the mould of James Forrest, because James Forrest certainly contributed when he was younger, but maybe like Anthony Ralston are two core players, and you need that in every single club that knows. Um, the country knows, the club knows what the standards are and what the expectations are for these new players coming in. So I don't think we should look at a new centre-back uh, now that we have three and then obviously Scales and Kobe Ash is still to go. I think they both will. Certainly with Lager Bielka coming in, that could potentially speed up their departures. Um, you never know, but I don't think we need a new one. I don't know what your opinions on that are. I think it would, uh, you know, I would like this to maybe 
like you say, very low on the uh, the priority list, certainly. But I wouldn't mind us maybe because you know I'm forever coming across highly rated 16 year old leaves Hibs for Newcastle and highly mm. rated 18 year old has left Queens Park for Bayern Munich and you know <laughs> crazy stuff like that. Yeah. So like. Uh, you know, if there's any centre backs like that knocking around, let's go and maybe hoover some of them up again. You know, yeah. let's get back yeah. into that yeah. um, that transfer market, as it were, because yeah, it's definitely not someone you want itching for minutes necessarily. It could upset mm-hmm. some some of the balance in the team or whatever. But yeah, with Lawal going out, because Lawal was the, the the next youth prospect, and people were like, when will he get minutes? But he's now away to join uh, Bruni at Fleetwood Town on loan. So. Yeah. Without him and without some of these other guys, it is just a bit thin and you want to have somebody there where it's like, okay, well, if it was the doomsday situation where we're playing like three games every eight days or whatever, you know, yeah, and yeah. I, somebody else gets yellow card suspended, somebody's on a knock, someone needs rested anyway, who do you turn to? There's still Tomoki Awata, I suppose. So, yeah, yeah. it's probably, yeah, that's yeah. probably something that's, that's worth mentioning um, in the same kind of breath. Yeah. But. Uh, another one that's been kind of, it's more, it's not really came out of anyone's words, Josh, but it's more the kind of, again, the rumour mill and the whispers that go around everywhere that Seagrist is maybe now like one foot out to somewhere. Mm-hmm. No one really yeah. knows where it would seem, but he's FaceTiming his bird from abroad and, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff's happening. So mm-hmm. if Seagrist leaves, we hope that and we expect that whole one in, one out thing to, to really uh, swing around and, you know, then maybe we're going to go and spend some, some money on a goalkeeper. In terms of the Seagrist thing, what do you make of it all? Yeah, I think obviously he could be doing a similar to Starfelt. Um, he's missy as well as new girlfriends in Australia. We've seen him FaceTiming him, FaceTiming him and stuff like that. So potentially that's where he could be headed. Uh, certainly, don't think Brendan Rodgers. Well, I said he, he's been good in training and things like that, but I don't think he's part of the plans. In all honesty, um, came in last season. He's only made two first team appearances in competitive matches. I don't think he has a future at the club. And out of the three goalkeepers, Joe Hart, Benjamin Seacrest, and Scott Bain, I think. The Swiss certainly would be the one you're looking to get rid of. I think being seasoned pro, he knows the club, homegrown quota. He ticks all the boxes for a second and a third choice. Obviously, so Joe Hart, we know what he's all about. He's contributed before. So you're probably looking to get Seacrest out the door and then bring in a new one. Like we've, we've always said on this podcast that goalkeeper is an area we should be looking at this summer. And I feel like once Seacrest goes, that kind of recruitment drive for that will increase and we'll look to bring someone in the club will have targets lined up we've heard about it from Anthony Joseph obviously Lovakovic other names that we don't know of but certainly I think that will be someone something we look at once Seagrass goes and I think he will um, just a matter of time probably and his agent looking to find a club for him um, he will want game time but we'll maybe look to be closer to his partner yeah because with the with the goalkeeper situation, once that's addressed, like, you can feel much better about the defence mm-hmm. as a whole. Like yeah. we still need to see Navrachi over a full season. We need to see Lagerbelke kick a ball, and mm-hmm. hopefully these guys can step up and, and you know fill the boots of of those that have went before them, as it were. You know, mm-hmm. big Navrachi, um, and uh, you know I think Lagerbelke has picked up the number four. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, as long as they go through, it's it's the, it's the last spot where it needs filled, and hopefully. Um, you know, that gives them the, some sort of impetus. But as we are talking now, it's the 17th of August. There's like two weeks left of the window. You know, how many people are out there available? What deals could be done? What sort of deals mm-hmm. could be done? That's the main concern with this position because we've got it wrong in the past and mm-hmm. we've not, um, you know, we've not been as decisive in the goalkeeper position for about 15 years or so. Mm-hmm. So it's one that we're all kind of nervous around, I'm sure. But the other kind of squad players that we think are just kind of clogging up the... The, the wage bill and that kind of thing. It feels like a jet he's doubling down and probably going to just see out his term with us mm-hmm. just because, yeah. you know, financially in his life, that's just probably the best thing for him. And mm-hmm. hey-ho, it is what it is. It's one of those ones. And James McCarthy, who's kind of obviously vanished, but, mm-hmm. the you know, it doesn't seem, you know, there's nothing, you never hear, you never see them. So it's yeah. hard to kind of know where we stand with all them. But beyond that, the rest of the squad, the other 20, 22 guys we've, we've got knocking around now, it feels like really strong, Two mm-hmm. to a position, and you know the latest kind of uh, reportings or updates we've had from Fabrizio Romano uh, suggest that we're obviously still in the hunt to replace Jota. Now I put mm-hmm. a video out on Celtic here earlier today, Josh, and I was saying that I'm not sure necessarily that means a left winger, right? Mm-hmm. Because also that's where Jota yeah. predominantly played, but it's a talisman type of guy. It's somebody will probably break our transfer record or try and push our transfer record against, and it's someone that should make a difference in the big matches, but. Since I recorded that and released it in the last 24 hours, we've been uh, quite strongly linked. And I don't know how strongly it is because, again, there's been a lot of jokes about the follow count on these uh, accounts that are breaking the news. But Podence, Daniel Podence, has been strongly linked with a circa seven to nine million pound transfer or loan with features in it and stuff like that. 
Yeah. yeah, to Celtic from Wolverhampton. Now, I don't know if you've seen much of Poden, so I know much about him yourself, Josh, but mm-hmm. I've seen a little of him when he was at Wolves and I know from when he was at Olympiacos, certainly, when he was making that move, everyone, the, the lazy comparison, and you see it when you watch him, but the lazy comparison for this guy is Eden Hazard in terms of how he looks mm-hmm. on the pitch yeah. and kind of how he, you know, kind of attacks defenders and his kind of style of play, etc. Obviously nowhere near the man, um, but in terms of what he gives you on the pitch, small, diminutive, very, very uh, prolific uh, at uh, Olympiakos in, in the Greek League. So there's no reason to believe he wouldn't do all right in our league either. You know, so mm-hmm. have you caught much of this and what do you make of it? Um, I feel like, so there was a wee tweet that went about this morning. That account had like 43 followers or something like that. I don't know how reliable that is. Um, friend of the channel, though, Anthony Joseph, did tweet about it. He said Celtic are keen on the move. Um, he has a year left on his deal. Um, probably... I think Wolves on 12 million, but Celtic see them for negotiation, which I certainly think there would be. Um, I can see is buying him if it's in the region of, like like you said, 7 to 9 to 10 million, uh, potentially even breaking a transfer record on him. Um, big talent, big player. Um, I think he would be the marquee signing uh, of the summer if we did get him in. Um, obviously, he's a he's a great, great footballer, quality footballer. You don't get a move to Wolves and play a number of seasons in the Premier League. Um, if you're not a good footballer, one Portuguese cap as well. I think I would love this deal to come off. I uh, don't know how likely that is at the minute, but I certainly think Podence would do well for Celtic. And potentially, I think with the winger situation, though, you'd be maybe looking to get, like we've said, one in, one out scenario. Um, like we've got seven at the club now, I believe. Podence would be eight. Um, so it's just getting crazy numbers out there. So I, I don't know what would happen, what Brendan's thoughts would be on that. Um, we've also seen Ryan Fraser linked as well, but I think with Podence, it's kind of similar to scenario to like Scott Sinclair uh, when he came to Celtic out of favour at a club down in England. We know he has talent, he's in that kind of 27, 28 age profile where he's coming into his peak years and could look to come up here and succeed and do really well for us. Uh, potentially would as well. Podence do well for Celtic in Europe. Uh, we're looking for Champions League quality players. I think he would potentially provide that for us. Um, I'd be all for this move, but I don't know how likely it is. And, it would come off, but hopefully it does. I think there's a good shot of it. You know, these guys that you tend mm-hmm. to find that have travelled in their career, you know, he's a Portuguese international, as you said, <laughs> but he did find himself in Greece and without going and looking him up, I'm sure he's played somewhere else um, mm-hmm. on his travels as well. So these guys are maybe a wee bit more open to, I'll play for like a big team, I don't care yeah. where they are kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. and some people do, some some players do, just turn their nose up to that, you know, they don't want to live in, you know, like rainy <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, but yeah, yeah I, I would love this when it came off on on the stature signing of it all. Like, I think it would be yeah. a really good player. The benefit to this versus Sinclair, of course, is he's much younger when we're acquiring him. So yeah. there is that prospect of you know, like when he is 30, 31, you're not going to be totally uh, down the river, not mm-hmm. um, yeah. not getting anything back on him. You know, especially if he does perform well in Europe, there could be plenty of teams that would pay a couple of quid for him. And yeah, that's the kind of moves we want to make sure the club are making. Mm-hmm. But with the rumours that are going out today also that Rogers wants to double down and get Abada and mm-hmm. Hitate new contracts, like Abada, Maeda and Kyogo will then all be on fresh paper, brand new contracts within the last three or four mm-hmm. months. And that has been a really settled um, best front three we've had so far. Now, Podence, does he make that better? Is probably the main question. I would mm-hmm. probably say, if we were to argue about it, we would probably, ran, we would probably land on yes because of the experience mm-hmm. and such, you know, but... Mm-hmm. Um, you're then you're then putting the position, uh, you're then putting Maeda and Abada back in the same position they were in last year, you know. And yeah. I think that this that a wee bit of the upturn in you know like seemingly on pitch kind of synergy we're seeing from them all is that they know uh-huh. their first team, they know their best yeah. eleven, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe that would maybe mess with that a little bit. What do you think? Is the po- but that does the Podence move actually make us better? Um, I think if you're bringing in a player of that quality, he probably does. But in terms of, like you've said, the overall squad situation, maybe it does knock guys like particularly Maeda because Podence is a left winger and Maeda has started all the pre-season games. He started two league games so far in that left wing spot. So if Podence was coming in, he would be threatening Maeda. Uh, I think Abad is probably your, your first choice in the right. I think Abad is nailed down. Um, potentially might see a wee competition there with Yang. We don't know. But... Yeah, it certainly would threaten Maeda, but in terms of overall squad, probably not. It might unsettle a few of the attackers, like the wingers, like I've said, like Satilio, we've still not even seen yet. Uh, Haksabanovic, don't know if he has a future, James Forrest, I think it would threaten them, but not in terms of the overall squad, and I think it certainly probably would improve, um, potentially coming in and 
and doing well and scoring goals and getting assists. I think he could rack up some decent numbers in Scotland and in Europe for us as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think he would certainly improve us. But I, in terms of Maeda, that might threaten him a bit. But at the same time, Maeda is versatile. He could probably play up front as well for us. Um, and he has... A, Maid is a great player to have around. We know Rogers has shown faith in him uh, with that new contract, so he certainly rates him and will want to keep him regardless of what happens. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. But yeah, over the last like couple of, uh, tra- I'm just trying to remember the last couple of transfers because we've had Odin home, we've had mm-hmm. uh, Telly home, and we've had uh, obviously we've had Navrochi. But we I have the press conference uh, today, later today, for Lager BLK, Joshy yep. Boy, and you'll be there for us. So yep. we have a now. Mm-hmm. Uh, clips and quotes and all that good stuff mm-hmm. from that all across the website over the weekend. So make sure to, to watch out for that. Just noticed I didn't mention that earlier, so I thought I would throw mm-hmm. it back in. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like Podence much better than uh, any of the other ones that the, the lazy papers have been linking us to, yeah. like the Ryan Frasers of this world mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, you know, whatever. But we've been kind of circling around it a little bit already, but CCV is an injury concern. He, you know, left at half time uh, in the last match against Aberdeen. Stephen Welsh came on, looked very impressive. And last season, when we were saving Carter Vickers to play the semi-final so he could then go off into the summer horizon and have his surgery, mm-hmm. we had Kamarnock right before that and he didn't play, even though he was fit or something like that, you know. So mm-hmm. I think if ever Carter Vickers is not 101% fit, he's probably mm-hmm. not going to play in some of these matches, yeah. which is maybe yeah. part of the role that's offered to Welsh, mm-hmm. is that you're going to play on these uh, multi-surfaces, um, yeah. or multi-weather surfaces yeah. rather mm-hmm. than Carter Vickers. So I wouldn't expect him to see play Kelly at all. What about mm-hmm. you? No, nah, nah, I think it will be... Probably Navroski will definitely start just alongside him, whether it'll probably be Welsh or Lager Bielka. Yeah, I don't know if he'll throw him in, in that plastic pitch on his debut. Um, my weight, Kelly. We know Kelly's going to be a tough game. Uh, obviously, we've seen that with the other side of the city going there. They lost in the opening game. so And Kelly have looked good. They got a goal that's dropped Tyne Castle at the weekend. Uh, McInnes has improved in this season. Um, I predicted them for top six. So I think it can do quite well. So it will be a tough one, but I think it'll be Welsh. Uh, Welsh and Navrovsky at the heart of defence. Maybe you might see like a BLK come on later on if we're up by a few and uh, make his debut. Yeah. And uh, so with, with uh, Carter Vickers being this kind of injured again at the beginning of the season, it does put a wee bit of fear into me anyway for mm. you know the season ahead because it's all well and good keeping a hold of your important players. But if the reason you're able to keep a hold of them is that uh, you know, they're a bit broken mm. or they can't really use them when yeah. you need them. Because last season... You know, the defence was in bits all the way through the Champions League. You know, we never had a coherent back four at all yeah. through the group stages. And, you know, would it have made a difference? I would say it would have. Would it have made much of a difference to change the outcome of the group? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But um, this is something that I would like to see, you know, an improvement on our Champions League effort this year is that, you know, we have a bit more of a settled defence. So I'm worried for, for the big man. I hope it's not too serious and it's just precautionary. Um, and we'll hopefully see him back against St. Johnson the following week. But Hitate seems to be out for a solid month off the back of this yep. calf thing, which mm-hmm. I think now, I think that locks him in. He's not going to be leaving in this window. No mm-hmm. one really buys injured players, especially mm-hmm. when it's like a relatively fresh one. Um, and again, like we mentioned a moment ago, he's been in the same breath as a badder to get a new contract offered to him. So with him being injured, is this maybe a good opportunity to get a contract in front of Hitate um, <laughs> coming to the end of a window, etc.? What do you think? Uh, yeah, it could be actually. Uh, when you think about it like that, it's definitely, I would say, locked in now um, for the summer, which is good. I think it will probably as well, him being out, cool down some of the speculation about Rodgers and Hitati. Rodgers not wanting to play him. Uh, hopefully that gets shut down because I think it was, I think a lot of it was probably nonsense. Uh, so, yeah, new contract would be great. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be doing handstands and somersaults with Hitati and I'm glad I get new contracts. Uh, so it'd be good to see that. But I think it presents a good chance for other members of the squad in the coming months. We've got a couple of big games coming up, so it will be disappointing to see him uh, left out. But so far, we've done all right without him. But he is one of the most influential players in the team when he's playing. Uh, certainly, we've seen that in games in the past, and especially derbies, which he's probably going to miss now. Um, but we'll just have to see if other people can step up. Yeah, I think he's potentially... And I know Turnbull's played the first two games. Obviously, mm-hmm. the first one better than the second. But I think against Rangers, I haven't watched them. I've watched them twice already this year. Like, we're going to, I don't think they look that great. I don't think they're anything, you know, I think they've got a few players that have made them a bit better. But with that being said, like, we will need more control over the ball, like, across mm-hmm. more stages of the pitch. And Thiago Odenholm, when we first signed him, Josh, I mean, you were on this podcast talking about how he is, like, if you look at him on paper, you could lay him over Hitati and you would see basically the same player in terms mm-hmm. of touch map, heat map, statistics mm-hmm. in general, very similar. And we've seen him come into the Aberdeen game 
and really like you know I, I thought he put himself about really well and you know he was my either really should have put him through for a tap in to make mm -hmm. it forward at the yeah. end as well mm -hmm. yeah and I wouldn't be surprised to see him start against Kilmarnock and maybe try and get that warmed up mm -hmm. yeah I would love to see that um I certainly rate Odin Odin quite highly um I've seen his Instagram post I don't know if you've seen it after the game um <laughs> he, he soon he soon edited it and changed the caption but um I think he's he's got a big ego as well. Um, he knows he's a talent, uh, which can be good and can be bad at the same time. But it is a big opportunity for him. I would rather play him over Turnbull uh, in the midfield. Uh, potentially McGregor, Oden, Thiago, Home and O'Reilly wouldn't be a it would be a very good midfield in my opinion. Uh, so I think that's a big chance for him to come in, uh, cement a place in the team. Uh, certainly, if he goes to Ibrox and he's the one who gets the nod, um, it will be will be a big big opportunity for him. And hopefully, he can take it with both hands because I think he's. Probably one of the biggest talents at the club right now. He's only 20, 21 and we've seen what he can do so far. And his signing was yet another shrewd one from the club. A great recruitment there. We've gone for only two and a half million. Um, one of the top, one of the top Norwegian prospects. So I believe he has talent. We've seen it in the few cameos he's made so far uh, in preseason. Obviously, Ross County game, and then he came on against the Dons at the weekend and done really well. So hopefully, we can see more of him. Certainly, the League Cup uh, as a start. He might be used to playing in those plastic pitches as well. They probably have a lot of them up in Norway, yeah. Scandinavia. So. Um, that that's only positive as well and then after that you've got a home game at St Johnston where you're going to dominate the ball St Johnston have looked terrible so far this season I think we can take a lot off them uh, that's for next week's podcast but I feel like right. Odin, Odin will look to come in and cement his place in the team over those two games and then look to look to start at Ibrox Yeah, because it does change the dynamic quite a bit because it was quite obvious that we played Turnbull against Aberdeen and at halftime it wasn't working and the swap was to go for Hitate. So, um, you know, I, I do think that that part of the team, that plan B or that, it may not even be plan A or B, it's just different, you know, dominating the ball versus not dominating the ball. Um, you know, we need to get that warmed up before we play Rangers. And if Hitate is out for a month, you know what these injuries can be like when it's like when it's like a calf injury, like a pull and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He's back in training in a month. Takes a week to get up to mm -hmm. speed. Then we're playing a big match. We kind of throw him in the deep end. Yep. We need to wait for the next match to play him. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. So uh, being out for a month quickly becomes kind of, you're not really getting any traction out of him for two months, really, maybe mm -hmm. six weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever the, you know, whatever the, the, the makeshift is in between. I see. I would like to see us against Kelly in midfield and even St. Johnson really mm -hmm. make sure we, we push. Because um, it could even be something like Tomoki Awata coming into defensive mm -hmm. midfield yeah. and then you mm -hmm. just move McGregor out, you know, and, yeah. and you can mm -hmm. do something like that. So yeah. there's definitely a lot of options because, again, the midfield is mm -hmm. so deep and we've got, you, know, you can even just stick with Turnbull and just try and mm -hmm. persevere yeah. with that being the best way to go, put Rangers on the back mm -hmm. foot more, yeah. um, that kind of thing. So um, otherwise, the front, it seems to be honest with you, really the whole team, uh, with maybe the exception of the goalkeeper and Ralston, I could see the whole team really changing against Kelly, like for mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons, you know, in terms of the forwards. Like, I could see Young Jun getting a start. He's probably mm -hmm. earned a bit of one. Mm -hmm. But as I think this as well, Josh, like one of the things, and I know where no one counts their chickens at Celtic mm -hmm. before they hatch, especially the manager when he's in press conferences. Mm -hmm. But one of the things he did say when he came back in was, I've won a treble before and went and done it again. Yeah. I know what it takes. I don't think he'll be writing this off. I don't think he'll be looking, you know, to get yeah. just use it as get guys minutes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. He'll still definitely. be very much a firm target on winning the game. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of quality in the squad that could see it pushed up. Um, and we could see a lot of guys mm -hmm. making a start. Probably too soon for the likes of Tilio yeah. and like yeah. okay, I would think. Let yeah. me ask you this, Josh, to, to give it back to you in a, a succinct way. Probably the biggest question mark over the squad. Mm -hmm. In a lot of different ways, potential transfer, who is number one, etc., mm -hmm. is left back. Do we see Burnaby come into this game mm -hmm. or do we see Taylor again? Um, I think, like you said, with the rotations, if he does make quite a few changes, you might indeed see Burnaby um, in the squad, uh, in the lineup potentially. I think he done really well in that athletic club game and then obviously dropped in flag day because his alarm wasn't working or something like that. Uh, he slept in, but Hopefully it doesn't on Sunday if he's getting the nod. I would love to see more of him. I think he's a player who can succeed under Brendan Rodgers, I've said it numerous times. And I think he just needs to take his chances when he's in the team. Um, I certainly do rate, I, I do rate the little guy. He was in court the other day, though. He got charged uh, with the drink driving. He finally got fined for it. A 12-month ban from driving. But, I mean, he's, he's just a young lad. That happened last year. You know, he came to the country just settling in problems, probably. And that, I, mean, I don't know if that's the done thing in Argentina or whatever, but <laughs> certainly, certainly it could be. I think it was a mistake from, uh, but not made up for it. Uh, look, he's just a young boy. He's having a family now. He's got his wee, he's got his wee boy, I believe it is, a wee girl. So 
he's going to mature, he's going to get better as well on the pitch, that'll only help him, I think, having that stability off the part of his family, he's finally had a year to settle in, in Glasgow and now could be his chance, uh, I think it'll be a big game for him against Kelly, we've seen he had a shocker against Kelly last season in the League Cup semi-final at Hamden, hopefully there's no repeats of that performance, um, but I think he'll do it, he'll do it a little bit, if Celtic dominate, and you look to get that ball on the left, and he's overlapping, you could see him get an assist up to create a couple of goals, we've seen I think St Johnston away last season, Putting a brilliant cross for Jack and Marcus um, at the end of the game. So I, I certainly rate him and I think he can do well under Brendan and I would love to see him start on Sunday. And I, I think he might because Brendan said he's not too bothered about the alarm thing. He, the sleeping in, he just said, listen, he's made a mistake. It will only get better. And we've seen him in training the day after it, all smiley in the pictures. So I think it's, that's absolutely fine. And hopefully we'll get the start. I'd love to see him get the nod. Yeah. So he served his penance. And I think it might yeah. go some way to tell us because, again, these rumour mills and all the whispering mm-hmm. circles that we've referenced a few times. Left back is somewhere that people keep mentioning. We've been linked to Magic Merlin, Quentin mm-hmm. over in France, yeah. and then another mm-hmm. guy in France, Gudmundsen, as well as some links there. I was going to say to you, but I caught wind of this earlier today, Josh. Mm-hmm. An old Celtic rumour mill favourite made the transfer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berger Melling, I don't know if you remember him, former mm-hmm. Rosenberg yeah. left back. Mm-hmm. He's just transferred to Copenhagen, uh, I've just oh. heard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no one will be linking us to Berger Melling yeah, this window. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he went from we were heavily linked to him. He scored against us at Parkhead, I think. Against he was very good in that game. I was at it. Yeah. And then I think he moved to Wren, if, I, if I'm yeah. correct. And then now, obviously, Copenhagen. So at least there'll be no next time. He's probably getting on a bit in age as well. We were linked to him when he was about 24, 25, I believe. So he'll be what 28 now, 29. Um, but hopefully looking at younger targets if we are looking at a left back Taylor wasn't the greatest at the weekend and um, that could be another reason why Burnaby might get the nod on Sunday so you never know but I think the names you mentioned there Quinton Mellon big talent there was talk a 7 million move for him um, and then obviously Gabriel Goodmanson I, I rate him I looked at him when he was at Grand Engine uh, I don't know if I butchered the name of that club um, and he was pretty good there but he's out of favour at Lille so it would be a good signing um, both of them would be good if they come in uh, but I think Burnaby got to give him a chance yeah I would think so as well and yeah, yeah I think this Kamarnock game gives the, the manager a great opportunity to really like shake things up in the squad give some guys that their opportunity we've mentioned Chang Jun the potential for Oden home some of the centre-backs and, and whatever as well maybe even Burnaby Oden's still injured Chang Jun I fancy and this could even be a game we could see Forrest maybe even get a start in as well potentially yeah, but I think with us only having because with no O it's got to be Kyogo or Maeda that start yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I don't think it'll yeah. be anything else Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it'll be Kyogo up top. Uh, you're probably looking at obviously big Joe between the sticks. I might even see a start for Scott Bain, you never know. Um Bernabe left back, probably you're looking at Navroski and uh, Welsh in the centre, Ralston right back. Don't know if he'll drop McGregor. I think that'd be I think that'd be a bit unwise, especially away at Kelly. It can easily turn into a banana skin and our next game's not for a week after it. If we had a game midweek and we were competing in Champions League qualifiers still, then I could see the need to rotate heavily. But I don't think there is, obviously. But the games are quite spaced out at the minute, so you may as well just keep them going, keep them ticking over. So probably McGregor. And um, then definitely O'Reilly, two goals in two games so far. He's looked rejuvenated under Rodgers. Not rejuvenated, he's just looked better. So he was still good last season, most assists in the league, etc. But he's adding goals to his game now. And that's good. He's certainly turning into that kind of Stuart Armstrong-type midfielder uh, that Rodgers had in his first spell in charge. Odin Thiago home alongside those two in the midfield. And then Kyogo up top. Maybe you can see Yang in the left and Abada in the right. Yeah, Abada got his goal at the weekend, or maybe I, I think the wingers it could be a toss of a coin. You never know who's going to play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, like you know, it has to be said we've had two decent games so far. You know, Ross mm-hmm. County is just a bit of a bit of a um, bit of a parade, isn't it? You know, get yeah. the flag up and just go and mm-hmm. uh, have a good yeah. time. Mm-hmm. But Aberdeen away, second game of the season, like is one of the the toughest fixtures, and we've come out of that. And I know the performance wasn't like ten mm-hmm. out of ten across the board, but. Overall, I think we probably played pretty well. And, you know, six points out of six, seven goals scored, no clean sheets. That's the, the big fly in the <laughs> ointment for me at the moment. And if we knock out Kelly, who beat Rangers first game of the season mm-hmm. in this round of the Cup, then, you know, again, it's just, you know, what, what, what a great start we've had. And mm-hmm. I think it's, yeah, it's just about keeping it moving oh. in one direction because with some of these injuries and transfers, you're just worried that, you know, we maybe lose a bit of what we've got. Mm-hmm. But I think that everyone's taking everything in their stride pretty well. And hopefully against Kelly, like you say, it isn't that banana peel, but we can actually use it as maybe a bit of a, mm. you know, one of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's been a great start to the season. I think a lot of people on social media are saying Celtic have been poor, etc. I think 
when you go away from home to one of the toughest venues in the league, I'd say, I said it last week, it's arguably second, third hardest game uh, you're going to get across the league season. Obviously, we won at Ross County. We've scored seven goals, six points out of six. I don't think many people can complain. It is a team in transition at the minute. We've got to remember that. I think we've seen evidence of that on the park as well. Some shades of the game where it's looked like Rogers. we've seen flashes of his style coming in. Obviously, the team is leaving behind Dan Postacoglu. So it is a team in transition from manager to manager. And we've done really well so far. Uh, just keep going, keep getting the three points uh, week in, week out. Obviously, Kelly's a cup game. If we can win that, get past St Johnston, you're going into Ibrooks with four wins out of four, nine points out of nine in the league. It's great for us. And I think it'll be, I think we can do that. We're definitely more than capable. And then going to Ibrooks and hopefully getting a result, uh, which is massive for us. That's kind of the first big game of the season. That's your, like you said, it's like the cup final you're leading towards. Um, and then after it, you've got the international break. If we come out of that game at Ibrooks with a win, it'd be, I think it'd be best start to the season we've had in a long while uh, well last season we started terrifically but as well but it'd be an amazing start to the season then after that you come back you're looking at more domestic games and then Champions League starting uh, the draws two weeks today for the group stage and I'm sure everyone will be looking forward to that and we'll be talking about that near the time as well but I think we've had a great start to the season so far and long may it continue that's it and against Kilmarnock I don't think we'll run them over necessarily I think it'll be quite a tight game I yeah. would expect the score to be something similar to the last weekend I would take Celtic 3 Kilmarnock 1 if you gave mm-hmm. me it now you got yeah. a score prediction for us Josh? Uh, I'll go 2-0 uh, I think we'll get our first clean sheet of the season um, I don't know if oh yeah because Kilmarnock have scored one goal in two games albeit they have been against Rangers and Hearts but I think we keep clean sheet 2 goal win 2-0 win should be good enough to see us through and then I think the draws is strong maybe Sunday night uh, I'm not entirely sure for the the quarterfinals, uh, so we may even see another wee derby if, if they get past Morton on Saturday. Um, <laughs> obviously, they've got the, the, the home draw against championship opposition when we have to go away to a tough game, but hey ho, hopefully, we'll get through it. That's it. To anyone that's going to the game, have fun, travel mm-hmm. safe, and we'll see you next week. Hail, hail, Josh. Hail, hail.